So now that the 2024 regular season has finished, we know where every team finished out in their conference standings. And we kind of know who's going to be where in terms of the MVP and the other award conversations. So today I'm going to react to my 2024 season predictions that I made before the season started. So yeah, if you guys do enjoy this style of content, feel free to drop a thumbs up and let me know in the comments any things you want to make fun of me about because now with the power of hindsight, we know what I was right about and we are going to know what I was completely wrong about. So I made so many predictions and takes in this video. Let's just get into it. Further ado, let's get into it. So we're going to start off with the Eastern Conference and coming in at number 15, the last seed in the conference, I do have the Detroit Pistons. It is a shame that I do think the Pistons will be the worst team in the East because they got Monty Williams as their new head coach in the offseason. Kate Cunningham's going to be healthy. They drafted us or Thompson. I'm expecting a big jump from Jaden Ivey and Jalen Dern in their second seasons. And I like Bojan Bogdanovich as a veteran on that squad too, but it's just there's so much talent in the NBA that even if you have a bunch of nice young players, you could still be one of the worst teams in your conference. So I do expect at some point that the Pistons will trade some of their veteran players, but really their seed does not matter this year. It's really just about the development of their young core. All right, so I was right about that. They finish as the worst seed in the Eastern Conference, one game worse than the Washington Wizards, and they ended up trading their veteran players. Sorry, like, I don't know why I made the music slightly loud in this as well, but yeah, you know what? Off to a great start. I'm sure it's all going to be right from here as well. Coming in at number 14, we have the Charlotte Hornets. This would definitely be a very disappointing season for the Charlotte Hornets, but I don't really think that they got that much better in the offseason. I like Brandon Miller. I like Nick Smith Jr. I don't know how much of an impact that they are going to make in their rookie seasons. Hopefully, we'll get a fully healthy Lamelo. <laughs> that Lamelo crossover was nasty. A ball season and a year two jump from Mark Williams. But when you just stack up this team against the rest of the Eastern Conference, it doesn't really move me. Coming All right, so they were the 13th seed. They did finish six games better than the Wizards, who were the 14th spot. So I guess I was slightly disrespectful to the Hornets, but you know what? I think I was more right than wrong on that take. And at number 13, we have the Washington Wizards. Great start. I'll take away. it. Chris Stops, Porzingis, and Bradley Beal on the offseason. So yeah, this team is entering a quote-unquote rebuild, but I do think that they're going to be relatively competitive in the Eastern Conference still. Could maybe even flirt with a playing tournament appearance. They're nope, that, that was wrong. <laughs> We're going to get plenty of offense out of Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, and Corey Kispert. I do think that Denny of Deha could break out this year. I love Daniel Gafford as their center to set some screens, rebound, and be a lob threat. And I'm also a huge fan, as you guys know, of Tyus Jones as a lead floor general. I do think that there'll be some bright spots from this Washington Wizards team this year. I just really couldn't put them any higher on this list. All right, so they ended up the 14 seed. So I was slightly optimistic for the Wizards this season. Coming in at number 12, we have the Orlando Magic. This could All right. Wow. All right. Uh, yeah, throw this video out the window now. I just predicted the fifth seed, a non-playing tournament playoff team that could win a round one series as the 12th seed. Ugh. be a slightly disappointing finish for the Magic if they weren't to make the play-in tournament. But I think like the Pistons, a big thing for the Magic this year is just to see their young core develop. See Franz Wagner take that year three jump. See Paolo Bancaro emerge as a rising young star in the league in his second season. And find out who you could build around those two players with. Is it going to be Markel Fultz for the future? Wendell Carter Jr., Jonathan Isaac, Jalen Suggs, Jed Howard, Cole Anthony, Anthony Black. Like there is plenty of young talent on this Magic squad. You just have to figure out this season who's going to be sticking around here for the next three or so years. All right. Yep. I was wrong about that. And then obviously I didn't expect this defense to be as elite as it was this year, because last year, I mean, we saw Paolo do um, great things in his rookie season and he took a jump in year two. I don't think Franz took a jump this year specifically. I think he kind of stayed a little stagnant from last year, but Jalen Suggs took the next step for sure. Jonathan Isaac was elite on the defensive end of the floor when he was healthy. And I was flat out wrong with the Orlando Magic. Hands up. That one's on me. Coming in as the team that I do think will miss out on the playing tournament entirely, it is the Brooklyn Nets. So yeah, they made the playoffs in 2023. I have them missing the playing tournament in 2024. It's a shame too, because the Brooklyn Nets do not have their first round pick this year. And I love Mikel Bridges as a number one this season. I think well, you shouldn't have because he wasn't good as a number one. He's going to be so much fun to watch on both ends of the floor and could be a top 20 guy just on pure output in the 2024 season. I just don't think that this team is good enough around him to compete with the other teams in the Eastern Conference. But hey, maybe we'll see Ben Simmons revert back to a little bit of the Ben Simmons of old. We'll see what goes on with Nick Claxton. Could he be a potential trade candidate this year with him being a pending free agent this offseason? Is Cam Thomas going to step up again? Is Derek Whitehead or Noah Clowney going to exceed rookie expectations? Because this team has a lot of good role players like Royce O'Neal, Dorian Finney-Smith, but these are like the third and fourth best players on their team overall. So I do think if the Nets want to make the playing tournament, they need to make a trade. 
All right, well, I was right about the Nets. They finished up as the 11th seed. I probably should have just swapped Toronto and Orlando, and this would have looked really good so far. Um, but yeah, funny enough, like Ben Simmons did not revert back to old, and to my surprise, or to anyone's surprise, he was injured, or to no one's surprise, you could say. Number 10, I do have the Chicago Bulls making the last. All right, the Bulls finish as the 9th seed. Uh, they could finish as the 10th seed. I am recording this before the playing tournament game, so hey, that would be great if that happens, because then I'd be right about the Bulls pick. Not in the playing tournament, I do wish the Chicago Bulls did what the Washington Wizards or Portland Trailblazers did in the offseason season and traded some of their top guys because I do think that there is a case for this Bulls season where it goes horribly wrong because DeMar DeRozan isn't getting any younger same with Nikola Vucevic and while Zach Levine is playing like a top 35 player in the NBA and had an incredible 2023 season I don't know how much of a ceiling raiser he could be for this Bulls team are we ever going to see Patrick Williams break out at all but I do think that Kobe White is going to have a big season I like that re-signing move from them Come all right I was high on the Kobe White signing I'll take that so you know what I kind of aced that Bulls take at number nine, we have the Indiana Pacers. So yeah, I'm a little bit lower. On yep, the see, that's a non-playing tournament team, and I had them three seeds too low. The Indiana Pacers than some other people. But to my defense, didn't know they were going to trade for Pascal Siakam. Four. But I do think we're going to see Tyrus Halpern and take that next step to being potentially a top 25, top 20 guy in the NBA. I don't think that Jairus Walker is going to have the most incredible rookie season. I also don't think that Obi Toppin is going to have like a most improved caliber season than some people think he will. But I'm very excited about Halliburton and Miles Turner as their rim protector. And they acquired Bruce Brown in the offseason. We'll see if Benedict Mathurin can break out in year two. And yeah, we'll also see if Buddy Hill gets traded as well because that was flown around because they aren't going to get a contract extension done and buddy healed leaving the pacers would be a massive loss for them well it really wasn't because they ended up as the sixth seed without him so i was more wrong than right on the pacers this year in at number eight i do have the toronto raptors so yeah i do think that this is gonna be the range of where the raptors are gonna finish they did lose fred van vliet in the offseason and they replaced him with dennis schroeder so definitely a downgrade there but i think a big thing for the raptors this season is seeing a linear development in scotty barnes's game as their franchise player i do think that they should definitely experiment with him at the point guard position to see See how he can improve as a playmaker but og and anobi and pascal siakam will be free agents in 2024 so there is a case this season for the toronto raptors that if they are hovering around the playing tournament they may just be a complete seller at the deadline and they could end up as a bottom three seed in the east and i could be completely wrong about this prediction all right well i did say somewhat of what happened because they ended up as the 12th seed in the east and they were one of the worst teams in the nba over the last two months of the season so i was slightly optimistic for the raptors but i do think if they kept og and siakam they would have finished around the eight seed my seven seed so the team to make it i guess the first leg out of the playing tournament are the miami heat now i know i know all right close i mean the heat right now are the eight seed they could um, uh end up being the seventh seed if they do beat philadelphia like i said i'm recording this video before that playing tournament game happens miami heat are going to be somehow in the nba finals or the eastern conference finals again this season but in my opinion they got worse in this offseason they lost key contributors like gabe vincent to the lakers and max Struess to the Cavs. victor oladipo also left as well to the okc thunder and i'm not going to bet against Jimmy Butler and Eric Spolster and Bam Adebayo, but I do think the Heat could have a pretty average regular season, but we know they'll turn it up when it comes to playoff time. All right, I think I was right about the Heat. Sixth seed, I do have the Atlanta Hawks. I was way too high on the Hawks going into the year. They were a massive disappointment of a team this season. Man, this Hawks team is pretty good. They have a lot of talent. You got Trey Young and DeJounte Murray in their backcourt. They have a plethora of forwards, even though they did trade away John Collins in the offseason. They're all pretty young as well. You got City Bay, DeAndre Hunter, Jalen Johnson, AJ Griffin, who I loved last year in his rookie season. They also have veteran Bogdan Bogdanovich. They have two good centers in Clint Capella and Onyeka Kungwu. Not even mentioned their 15th overall pick in Kobe Bufkin, who I absolutely we loved out of Michigan. So yeah, I think that this Hawks team could be pretty competitive throughout the regular season, and I do think that they will make the playoffs this year. All right, well, they could still make the playoffs. They could make it out of the playing tournament, but I was also slightly optimistic on the Hawks going into this year. And as my fifth seed, I do have the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, at the moment I'm recording this, James Harden looks like he's going to start the season for Philadelphia and actually play for them and not hold out. And I also do believe that Tyrese Maxey is going to break out this season and being one of the top young guys in the NBA. But what scares me about the Sixers squad is definitely their depth. They did bring back B-Ball Paul, and they do have P.J. Tucker, who's getting up there in age. Trading for DeAnthony Melton last offseason was a great addition, but I do wonder how this team is going to be if there's some injuries to the top-end guys, and that could affect their regular season standing. Which it did, because Embiid got hurt, and they ended up falling to the 7th seed at the end of the regular season. Obviously, the playing tournament has yet to happen, but you know what? I wasn't completely wrong for the Sixers so far. 
So coming into my fourth seed, I do have the New York Knicks. Damn, I was hating on the Knicks. They ended up as the two seed. The Knicks were the fifth, but I also didn't know they were getting OG and Anobi. Seed last year, and they beat the Cavs in round one of the playoffs, and they got better in this offseason, in my opinion. They did trade away Obi Toppin, but they did add Dante DiVincenzo with their mid-level exception. And I just love how much depth the Knicks have when it comes to their guards and forwards. Because you have your franchise player in Jalen Brunson at your point guard position, but over there on the perimeter, you have RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, Quinn Grimes, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, as well as Miles McBride, who's an incredibly underrated defender. And I haven't even mentioned Julius Randle, who was on All-NBA third team last year, and Mitchell Robinson. And the Knicks will play hard throughout the regular season under Tom Thibodeau as their head coach. I don't think that this Knicks team is going to win a championship in 2024, but I do think that they can finish as the fourth seed in the East. You know what? Great take about my Knicks. Let's go. So coming in at my number three seed, I do have the Cleveland Cavaliers. We'll definitely need to see them make some adjustments if they want to go further in the playoffs in 2024. But throughout the regular season, I think that they're going to be a really good team. They have one of the better guards in the NBA in general in Donovan Mitchell. They have one of the best rising young defenders in the NBA in Evan Mobley. Darius Garland was a phenomenal point guard last year, especially with his efficiency. And Jared Allen is always a consistent option at the five. I also loved who they added this offseason in George Niang and Max Struess. They also still kept Karis LeVert and they still have Isaac Okoro. This Cavs team is definitely deeper this year and I think they could finish as a top three seed in the East. All right, you know what? The Cavs were the three seed for most of the season. So I think this is still a good take, even though they fell to four. So coming into my two seed, I do have the Milwaukee Bucks. I do think that there's a better chance that the Cavs kind of leapfrog the Bucks for the two seed than the Bucks take that one seed because Damian Lillard, which is also a pretty good take, getting older and same with Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez. So we could see a little bit of load management throughout the team this year. They don't need to play incredibly hard throughout the regular season. They really just need a top three seed and then really turn it up a notch in the playoffs because I don't know if anybody is beating this duo of Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo. So obviously this hasn't been a great year for the Bucks. They were the two seed for most of the season. So so I still think this is a good take, but Giannis got hurt at the end of the year and they ended up falling to the three seed. We did process of elimination. You know that the Boston Celtics are my one seed in the Eastern Conference. This team, just one through five is incredible. You got Drew Holiday, one of the league's best perimeter defenders at the one. You got potentially Derek White, who's one of the league's best also defenders at the guard position at the two. You have Jalen Brown, Supermax Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum at the forward positions. And then Kristaps Porzingis, who's seven foot three and could be a knockdown three point shooter at the five. This Celtics team is going to be incredible this season. All right. All right. I honestly don't think the East standings were that bad. I mean, I definitely got the Orlando Magic wrong. I was a little too high on the Atlanta Hawks, but honestly, it could have been a lot worse. So those were my Eastern Conference. Because I know the Western Conference standings are a lot worse. So before we get back into the video, I want to give a word from today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. With the NBA playoffs finally being here, Underdog Fantasy is by far the easiest way to play fantasy sports and enjoy playoff basketball. And if I'm going to be going to any playoff game this season, or if I'm going to be watching it with some friends, or even just watching it by my Myself, I'm going to be using Underdog Fantasy as well throughout it. And Underdog's Pick'em Game is my favorite way to play fantasy sports right now and enjoy a game a little bit more. You go to the Pick'em tab on the Underdog Fantasy website or app and you pick either a player will have a higher or lower stat total in that game they are playing in for a chance to win big. You can pick between two to five players in your Pick'em entry and you can win up to 20 times your money on a single game if you get all your picks right. And Underdog has a great promo for you guys. If you use my link in the description below, you can get a 100% deposit match up to $100 using code SROS, S-R-O-S. It's kind of a no-brainer. They also do new customer specials as well that you can be on the lookout for where you can get a promo for just maybe a Nikola Jokic, a Luka Doncic, or somebody playing throughout the NBA playoffs to get over 0.5 points. So that is a nice thing that Underdog Fantasy does for you guys as well. So yeah, that's a 100% deposit match up to $100 if you use code SROS, S-R-O-S, and make sure you use Underdog Fantasy throughout the NBA playoffs this season. For any predictions throughout the regular season, and now let's get into the West. So coming in as my 15th seed in the West, I do have the San Antonio Spurs. And I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, like the Spurs as the 15th seed. Damn, I thought the Spurs were the 15th seed, but Portland just beat them out. So I was not technically correct on this. Seed sounds kind of wrong because they have great young talent in Victor Wimbanyama, Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan, under Greg Popovich. But I just think there's so much talent in the NBA that I just got to put somebody at the 15th spot. Seeding definitely doesn't matter for the Spurs this season. They just need to see some good progression out of their young guys. Obviously, all eyes are on Wemby this year. 
So coming against my 14th seed, I do have the Portland Trailblazers, a team that just traded away Damian Lillard. I was so close, man. Portland ended up 15, San Antonio 14, just needed those two teams to swap. And I really like this Portland Trailblazers squad as well. They have a lot of good NBA talent with DeAndre Aiden, Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams, Jeremy Grant, as well as some young guards and wings like Shaden Sharp, Anthony Simons, and the number three overall pick, Scoot Henderson. I'm just predicting that the Portland Trailblazers will eventually make a trade at some point in this season, either maybe shipping off Malcolm Brogdon or Robert Williams. And that can kind of skew where they're going to finish in the standings. But hey, there is definitely a scenario where the Trailblazers are a playing tournament team. Mm. So at the 13th spot, I do have the Houston Rockets. I think like the Detroit Pistons and the San Antonio Spurs, seeding once again doesn't matter too much for the Houston Rockets. And I say too much just because they don't own their pick if it's outside the top four. Then it goes to the OKC Thunder. That dates all the way back to the Chris Paul Russell Westbrook trade. But it's really all about the development of Alperen Shangun, Jabari Smith Jr., and Jalen Green under Ime Odoka. They did add a lot throughout free agency with Fred Van Vliet, Dylan Brooks, Jock Longdale, and the fourth overall pick as well as Ahmed Thompson and a steal in the mid part of the first round in Cam Whitmore. I do think there's some notable variants where the Rockets could finish up. Like they could exceed expectations and really take a next step this year, but I think that's more likely to come in 2025 than in 2024. I mean, they did take a step this year. I was slightly disrespectful to them. They ended up as the 11th seed, but I think I was on point with what I think the Rockets could be this year and next year. So my projected 12th spot are the Utah Jazz, which would kind of be a little bit disappointing based on the season they had last year. They added John Collins, Keontae George, and top 10 pick Taylor Hendricks in the offseason. They brought back Jordan Clarkson, and you expect the players they got back for Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell to take another step next year and Walker Kessler, Lowry Markkinen, and Colin Sexton. The West is just so competitive though, so it was really hard for me to place them any higher. And this is- All right, I was right about that. I got the Jazz exactly right. They finished as the 12th seed. Definitely my hot take of the video. I know what I'm about to say. It's 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 the worst take I think I've had in quite some time. So just be ready for it. Video. I could look like an absolute fool when I react to this video here, at the end of the yep, season. Yep, here it is. Here it is. God damn it. God damn it. Give me an L in the comments. Just just comment it now. Comment L. Comment. I'm a dumbass. This is the worst take I think I've ever had. Listen, I do have the OKC Thunder missing the playing tournament as my 11th seed. They finished <laughs> one seed. Oh my God. You know what? Can I just cover? Can I just cover part of that one and then we're good, right? Like if I just said, you know what? I, I have them as the one seed in the West. We're good. Oh my God. I don't even want to listen to this. This is going to be so bad. It really all stems to the Western Conference just being that good. And I think they could be around a 500 team and still finish as the 11th seed. This Thunder team is good, man, though, so it really hurt me. And I'm really dying on this hill that they're not going to be a playing tournament spot. I just think that they don't have a lot of depth in the front court. And they really do need Shea Gilgis Alexander to play majority of the season for me to think that they're going to hit their win total of 44 and a half projected wins. All right. Yeah, terrible take. I mean, they do lock size in the front court. Sure, Matt. But yeah, Shea was a MVP candidate this year. Jalen Williams and Chet Holmgren were phenomenal. Um, for the Thunder this season. This was one of the worst takes I've ever had. This is one, yeah, like hands down one of the worst takes I've ever had. So as my 10th seed, I do have the New Orleans Pelicans, which is also kind of funny because they have Zion Williamson and who knows if he's going to play even more than 40 games this season. But I do like this Pelicans roster fully healthy a little bit more than I do of the Thunder roster, even though I think- I mean, I do wonder, like the Pelicans could theoretically beat the Thunder in a seven game series, but still, this is, I, I just hate myself for that take. I'm the lesser of the two in the head coach department, but I was in love with Brandon Ingram's finish to last year's season as a playmaker. They're getting Zion Williamson back. They still have good veterans like Jonas Valanciunas and CJ McCollum. I love the addition of Jordan Hawkins in the lottery. He's going to help them right away. We'll see if Dyson Daniels can take another step as well, but it is a shame that Trey Murphy might miss the start of the regular season for a little bit of time because he's one of the league's best young shooters. So All right, they finish as the seventh seed. They could fall to the ninth seed if they don't make it out of the playing tournament, but I think I was slightly disrespectful to New Orleans. But coming in at my ninth seed, I had them missing the playoffs. I think they were just too lucky last year when it came to injuries and they didn't improve their roster too much this offseason while the rest of the Western Conference did. That are the Sacramento Kings. So yeah, hot take by me once again. I mean, they finished the regular season as the ninth seed. They could end up in the playoffs as the eighth seed, but you know what? This is a good take at least after, I can't believe still that OKC take that. Oh man. Sacramento Kings making the playoffs, but I do have them as the ninth seed in the playing tournament. I think I need to- I'm actually just still so embarrassed from that OKC take. See another season from DeMontis Sabonis there in Sacramento. If I think he could be the number two on a really good team for them. And like I said, they didn't really add too much this off season. Didn't really use that cap space outside of extending Sabonis and Harrison Barnes and bringing in Chris Dorte and Sasha Pizenkov. But who knows? Maybe this team stays fully healthy again and Kevin Herter and Malik Monk are just some of the better three-point shooters once again. And this Kings team is a three seed once again.
So coming in at the 8th seeded spot, I do have the Minnesota Timberwolves. This team, I think, definitely has some variants as well because they have a lot of talent in the front court with Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert. It did not work out at all in the 2023 season, but I think with an offseason together, it could definitely work in 2024. We all expect Anthony Edwards to take a next step to being the true number one on this team and leading the Timberwolves to the playoffs once again. We saw Jaden McDaniels break out on the defensive end of the floor last year. They'll have a veteran point guard in Mike Conley throughout the regular season, and I do think that this team is in well position to make a trade as well. Coming in well, yeah, uh, they ended up tied for the best record in the NBA, finished as the three-seater, excuse me, the best record in the Western Conference. So uh, another L take for me, just completely like did a horrible job evaluating the Timberwolves and the Thunder going into this year. The number seven spot, the talent really doesn't show that they're a seventh seed, but you know, they're just getting up there in age. I do have the LA Clippers. So I think, oh man, if you said the LA Lakers, Matt, that would have been a good take. I mean, the Clippers did finish as the fifth seed, excuse me, as the fourth seed. They were only two games better than the seventh seed. So I don't think this is the worst take in the world. And I also made this video before the James Harden trade. I think the LA Clippers, if fully healthy, could 100% win an NBA title, but we really haven't seen that since the bubble. So I'm not going to put that into my prediction. I'm calculating that either Paul George or Kawhi Leonard will miss some time this year, and that could hurt them in the seeding. And that didn't. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Kawhi and Paul George were pretty healthy this season. So I have them at number seven. Maybe they make a trade for James Harden, and I would adjust that a little bit. But the Western Conference is very competitive. Kawhi Leonard is no longer a top five guy in the NBA. You could say Paul George is no longer a top 10 guy in the NBA, and they're both trending in the wrong direction. Coming I think up. they both had bounce back years this year and obviously were healthier and they ended up getting James Harden, but I don't think that was the worst take. My sixth seed. After like the OKC and Timberwolves takes, yeah, that looks like a great take. I do have the Dallas Mavericks, a team that completely missed the playing tournament last year, but they're going to be getting a full season of Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic together. I love what they did in the draft, adding Rashawn Holmes, Olivier Maxence Prosper, and Derek Lively. I'm expecting another jump from Josh Green and Jaden Hardy this year, and I love them using their mid-level exception on Grant Williams as well. Well, that wasn't a good signing, but yeah, they finished as the fifth seed, so that was a solid take. At the fifth seed, I do have the Golden State Warriors. Well, the Warriors finished as the tenth seed, Matt, so yeah, just an L of a Western Conference. It's actually a seed up from where the Warriors finished last year. And talk about variances, they could also have an extreme variance with them getting up there in age of the big three of the Splash Bros and Draymond Green. They didn't add too much this offseason as well. They only really added Brandon Pauljemski throughout the draft, but this team has some well-rounded talent, like I'd even mentioned Andrew Wiggins or Kevon Looney. Let's hope we could see a breakout season from Jonathan Kuminga. And we did, which was nice. Coming at the fourth seed, I do have the LA Lakers. I do think the LA Lakers are actually better than the team I had ahead of them. I just think that they're going to be a little bit worse throughout the regular season. But as we saw last year, that didn't really matter. They made it to the Western Conference Finals as a seventh seed. And the Lakers got much better in the offseason. They re-signed Austin Reeves. They added Gabe Vincent, Torian Prince, and Jackson Hayes. They drafted Jalen Hood-Shifino and Maxwell Lewis. They also re-signed Jared Vanderbilt as well and D'Angelo Russell. They also picked up Christian Wood late in the offseason as well. I really like this Lakers team and they could definitely withstand injuries if AD or LeBron goes down. You know what, like out of teams that could win the Western Conference, the Lakers are probably in the top four if they make it out of the playing tournament. I think we can all agree on that. And they only finished four games worse than the fourth seed. So I think that's a slight L take, but not the worst in the world. Coming in at the three seed, and that's with the suspension of John Moran. I do have the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess to my defense, like, the Grizzlies were one of the most injured teams of all time. They had, like, 30 different players play for them this season, so I can't really hate on myself for this one. Please. So an extreme hot take by me once again, but I do think that Taylor Jenkins is the most underrated head coach in the league. The Grizzlies last year were the two seed with everything going on on the court and off the court. They're going to be getting Steven Adams and Brandon Clark back fully healthy. And they also- And yeah, this came out before Steven. Steven Adams was rolled out for the year. Marcus Smart in the offseason as well. I do think that this team is going to be so, so good once John Moran is back because you have John Moran, one of the weak offensive point guards in the league at the one. You have Marcus Smart, so good defensively at the two. Desmond Bain, such an elite scorer and shooter at the three. Triple J, who won Depoy last year at the four. And Steven Adams at the five. This is a damn good Grizzlies team at full strength. Yeah, at full strength. And we never got that. Coming in at the two seed, I do have the Phoenix Suns. I do think that the Suns addressed their depth problem in incredibly well after acquiring Bradley Beal. They signed guys to a bunch of veteran minimums. Oh, and I apologize. I, the Timberwolves did not tie for the best record in the Western Conference before. They ended up finishing a game worse than the uh, Nuggets and the Thunder. So I wanted to correct myself there. Um, yeah, was slightly wrong on, on the Suns here. They were a little banged up this year, but they finished as the six seed, five game difference between them and the two seed. It's like Yuta Watanabe, excuse me, seven game difference. 
Eric Gordon, Chemezi Metsu, Josh Akogi. And while I don't love the DeAndre Aiden for Yusuf Nurkic swap, I do love that they also got Nasir Little and Grayson Allen in that trade as well, who could be huge parts of their bench. And they like the addition of Frank Vogel as their coach this offseason. And lastly, is my number one seed in the Western Conference throughout the regular season, I do have the Denver Nuggets, the reigning NBA champions. The Nuggets did lose Bruce Brown to the Indiana Pacers, and they will definitely feel that, but I think we could see a jump from Christian Brown this year. I love the addition of Julian Strother, Jalen Pickett, and Hunter Tyson throughout the draft. And they still have Nikola Jokic, who in my opinion is the best player in the NBA. Right. Yeah, so they finished with tied with the best record in the West. So fine take by me. It's still a horrible Western Conference prediction because of where I predicted the Timberwolves to finish and where I predicted the Thunder to finish. So now that you know my standing predictions, here's who I have in the Eastern Conference Finals. I have the Boston Celtics, who are the one seed, going up against the Milwaukee Bucks, who are the two seed. And I do have the Celtics over the Bucks in seven. And over in the West, I do- I mean, that's not impossible to happen now, like as long as I have the Celtics winning. I have the Denver Nuggets as my one seed going up against the Phoenix Suns as the two seed. And I have the Nuggets over the Suns in six. I think the Nuggets will make the Western Conference Finals again. I doubt the Suns make it though. Finally, for my NBA Finals prediction, I do have the Boston Celtics over the Denver Nuggets in seven with Jason Tatum being your Finals MVP. So now could still happen. Now it's going to my award predictions. For my MVP pick, I do have Nikola Jokic. I do think that the Denver Nuggets are going to be the one seed in the Western Conference this year. They're already riding the high from the NBA championship last year. And we all know that Nikola Jokic is the top guy in the NBA at the moment. If you don't have him number one, you definitely have him number two. And the stat lines he puts up are absolutely incredible. And I do think that he's going to win his third MVP in four years this year. It's looking like that's going to be right. I do have Jason Tatum as a runner up as well. All right. So for my rookie of the year pick, I'm going to go a little bit different, be a little edgy here. I'm going to, this is so stupid. I know what I'm about to say, and it's because in 2019, I picked John Moran over Zion. And I thought that was cool that I predicted that right. And there was going to be injuries to Zion. And I thought there was going to be some injuries to Wemby this year. So Scoot Henderson, who was the third overall pick in the draft. I do think now that the, I don't know what's the worst take in this video, the Thunder take or this take. Trailblazers traded away Damian Lillard. Scoot Henderson is going to get such a heavy workload in his rookie season. And he's also surrounded by great shooters, defenders, and rim rollers that can really help his development and stats in year one. So that's why I'm predicting Scoot Henderson to win rookie of the year. And I do have Wimbanyama as my runner up. I know a lot of people also include Chet Holmgren and Brandon Miller. But I do like Keontae George as a potential dark horse to win rookie of the year too. Horrible, horrible take by me. So for my sixth man of the year, I'm going with Emmanuel Quickly, who finished runner-up last year. And it does look like that RJ Barrett will be starting alongside Josh Hart this year. So if Emmanuel Quickly does play north of 60 games off the bench, I do think he's finally going to win that sixth man of the year award that some people thought he should have won last year over Malcolm Brogdon. And we don't know fully if they're coming off the bench yet, but two runner-ups that I do like are Derek White of the Boston Celtics and Malcolm Brogdon of the Portland Trailblazers. While both are on, White ended up starting, Brogdon was not in that conversation, and Quickly never had a chance to to even be in the conversation for this award because he was traded to the Raptors and started right away for them. So for my defensive player of the year pick, I do think it's going to be a first time winner and I'm picking Bam Adebayo mm. to finally win the award. I feel like Bam Adebayo has been in the conversation to win the award like every year for the last three, but he never really got it. So I do think he'll have a little bit of the narrative on his side this year, like Joel Embiid did for MVP last year, but he's really going to have a tough field to go up against. There's so many elite rim protectors that could win this award. And for my runner up, I am choosing Evan Mobley, but I wouldn't be surprised if Triple J won it again, or if Rudy Gobert got back into the mix. For I, at least I mentioned Rudy in the conversation, but was wrong with my BAM pick. The most improved pick, I am going with Tyrese Maxey of the Philadelphia 76ers. I was kind of hoping that James Harden was going to be traded because then I really would have loved this Maxey pick even more. He's going to be going into his fourth year in the NBA, which I think is a little bit of a breath of fresh air from a third year guy winning it. And Maxey's just been getting better and better each year in his NBA career so far. So I thought if he was like the official number two, his numbers would have exploded this year. But I think even with James Harden still there, he's going to average career high in points and usage and maybe career high in efficiencies as well. He went from eight points to 17 and a half in year one to year two. He went from 17 and a half to 20 in year two to year three. I think there's a chance that Maxi could average north of 24 points per game this year. And there's a bunch of guys that I like could also be in the most improved conversation as well. One notably being Franz Wagner of the Orlando Magic. I think he's going to have a massive year three. But I do like Maxi getting the award because he was the 21st overall pick in the 2020 draft. A lot of the guys in the conversation will be former top 10 picks. So you knew they were supposed to progress at an elite level. Yeah, so I was wrong about Franz. He's not going to be in that conversation. I didn't really expect Kobe White to have the jump he had. And I know Kobe White was a top 10 pick, um, but nobody really expected this from Kobe White. So I think if I made it today, I would go Kobe White 1, Maxi 2. But if Maxi wins the award, hey, I can give myself credit here. 
So for my clutch player of the year pick, I'm going to go with Luka Doncic. I do think that the Mavericks are going to be so much better in 2024. So Luka is going to really have more opportunities to really just be a clutch player for the Dallas Mavericks. We all know that he's the number one guy, even with Kyrie Irving there. So I do think that there's going to be a huge opportunity for him to really get a crazy amount of clutch opportunities. And somebody I do like to also get that award as well is Damian Lillard, who's also going to get a lot more playing time and clutch opportunities for a winning team. Yep, um, it looks like it's going to be maybe DeMar DeRozan winning this award or Steph Curry. I think I'll be wrong there. And lastly, for my coach of the year pick, I'm going to go with Taylor Jenkins. Nope, <laughs> nope. I did mention him in the beginning of the video that I think he's the most underrated coach in the NBA. I do think the Grizzlies are going to finish as a top three seed at number three in the Western Conference. And that's with the 25 game suspension to John Moran. So that's going to definitely help out into his narrative. He's never won the award. So I do think he'll finally get it this year. And runner up, I'm going to go JV Bickerstaff of the Cleveland Cavaliers because I do think that they're also going to be an elite team in the regular season. Nope, nope, nope. So lastly, this is gonna be pretty fun. I'm gonna predict five guys that I think- I love this part every year. Will get traded this year. First one being Cole Anthony of the Orlando Magic. Hell, nope, got extended. I do think that that Magic backcourt is very crowded. Like I mentioned all the young guys before with Fultz, Anthony Black, Jed Howard, like the last two who they took in the first round this year. They took Jalen Suggs in the 2021 draft in the top 10. They do have veteran defensive guard in Gary Harris as well. So I think Cole Anthony could be the odd man out and a team that is contending may look for some scoring off the bench and could trade for Cole. Next up, I do have Nick Claxton. I also mentioned to me in the beginning of the video that I think like if the Nets are not going to make the playoffs and if they don't want to pay him 25 million in the offseason, his value could be at like an all-time high and they could look to offload him at some point if a team is looking to get some rim protection for their playoff run. And hey, if he gets signed and traded this offseason, does that count still? <laughs> Can I just get at least one right? Number three, I do have Jordan Clarkson of the Utah Damn. Jazz. If you watch the video, you know I didn't predict the Utah Jazz to make the playoffs and the team that is looking for some wing scoring to come off the bench for their playoff or championship run could look to Utah and I don't think it would cost anything too much or even a first round pick to get Jordan Clarkson. So the second to last guy I do have is DeMar DeRozan, a very big name. He probably should have got traded, but nope. A free agent at the end of the season. I don't think the Chicago Bulls are going to make the playoffs and I think they're going to be very inconsistent throughout the regular season. So I could see DeMar getting traded this year. And lastly, I'm going with Pascal Siakam. You could also say yes. Obi and Obi as well. But if yes, I got one right. Let's go. Raptors are disappointing this year. And if there's injuries, a team could look to combine some salary to go after Pascal Siakam, especially if the Raptors aren't going to resign Siakam. Him, you might as well trade him for something at the deadline. And then here are five coaches that I think could get fired this year. It's tough. I was also going to have Chauncey Billups here, but since they traded away Damian Lord, I don't think they're going to fire him. And I think he's coming back as well. So first off, I'm going with Joe Mazzulla of the Boston Celtics. If they have any finish outside of the conference finals, he's 100% getting fired. People thought he was getting fired last year, and they basically were one game away from making it to the NBA finals. I think that is still true. Next up, I do have Billy Donovan. Mentioned a couple... That could happen. He uh, He's not going to end up going to Kentucky, uh, but he could still get let go. On top of this video, if the Bulls do have a disappointing season, I think they could look to go in a new direction as they could possibly be starting a rebuild. Next up, I do have Willie Green of the New Orleans. Okay, bad take for me. Orleans Pelicans, if they don't make the playoffs, I think Willie Green's time will be up in New Orleans since they haven't really accomplished a lot with him there because just a few years ago, they had one of the brightest young cores in the NBA. And I can't put the blame on him for Zion being hurt for most of those years, but they've definitely had some disappointing finishes. At number two, I do have Jock Vaughn of the Brooklyn Nets. Got that one, right? A team that could also look to go in a different direction as well if they are entering some type of rebuild at the end of the season. And lastly, come I on, say... I don't know if I'm going to say Wes Unsold, but say Wes Unsold. You have Steve Clifford of the Strong. All right. Hey, he didn't get fired, but he kind of did. Hornets. I predicted them to finish as the 14th seed. He's not been a good coach in the NBA with Charlotte and Orlando, so they should probably move in a different direction. So yeah. Those All right. That is it. So many takes were made in that video. I still can't get over the Thunder one, but I had some good ones at least. I hope you guys did enjoy that reaction. If you did, drop a thumbs up. And if you enjoy that style of content, let me know. Let me know kind of maybe your preseason takes in the comments below as well. And we get see if those aged well or not. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.